Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back here to Aragon Expo 2024. This is day four, day four already. It seems like, wow, day four, and we are about to shoot a really, really cool air gun. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. If you guys want to check out who they are, go to our website, theairgunexpo.com. If there's something you're watching, you're going to see this gun right here. This is the FX Impact Mark III and 35 cal. You say, Rick, that's awesome. That's brought to you by Utah Air Guns. Click their logo. You jump to their page. You can see all the stuff we're featuring for them. There's a form there. You can fill that form out. It goes right directly to them. So make, please make use of that. And we're live right now, but you might be watching this six months from now. Links in the video description will get you to that page and you have the same access. So definitely make use of it. Also want to say thank you to all of our sponsors on Airgun Web, uh, Gateway to Airguns. Again, links to all that, video description. If you guys want to help us out, like directly, got it. Rick, I love what you're doing. I want to help you do more of it. Well, we have links to our Patreon page and we also have links to the Airgun Army. Uh, the Officers Club over at Aragon Army, both of which help fund what we do. So definitely, links in the video description. Now let's get started here. This is the FX Impact Mark III. And I remember when the Impact first came out, and a buddy of mine got it, and he just fell in love with it. And it wasn't my thing. It was, I, I was back in the sort of, it must have a wood stock, it must be traditional, et cetera, et cetera. We've already been through the story about how I picked up the Catron and went, uh-oh, and that was it, right? So the next thing was I started getting into black guns, and I, I get it. I get absolutely the fascination and the uh, attraction to this particular platform. It's a little over my head, frankly. Um, once I get a gun set, I'm not one to go in and twiddle and tweak and all that stuff. But there are a ton of you guys that are. And this gun has, I mean, just all the features. I'm going to flip it on its head here and just show it to this camera over here. All right, so this has, we have three gauges, right? So we have our pressure gauge. We have our first reg, our second reg. We have a, uh, I don't know the correct term, but we have an adjuster that deals with how much air, how much flow you're going to get when you charge. I'm, uh, look at this one. How much, which one am I supposed to look at? Look at that look one because your head's cut off in this one. Okay, so, sorry. So you have a, you have a, a knob here about how much airflow is going to push out. You have so many different adjustments. And then, once all that's dialed in, you have a hammer adjust adjustment. You have a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. Whew, by the time you're all done, uh, hopefully you have the thing dialed exactly where you want it. Now, when I got this gun, it was dialed in for, it was dialed in more for shot count. Uh, I have tuned it for, mm, I won't say like max power, because on this gun, we, we got like topped out about 150 foot pounds, which is a lot uh, for this gun. I've tuned it for about 110, 115, right in that range, which for me is ideal. It gives me good velocity, plenty of velocity, even if I want to hunt out to 100 yards, and it gives me good accuracy with pellets. Now, I have not tried to shoot slugs in this, primarily because the magazine is very thin, or it's, it's, not real, it's not real deep, so I don't know what slugs would even run in this. I have shot a couple, and I just felt like it was, I'm trying to take the gun out of its comfort zone, and frankly, I'm a 100-yard shooter. I'm not going to try and push this to 200 and that stuff. I know that some of you guys are. Maybe the small bore stuff, the smaller caliber stuff, is better suited for that than this would be. This, for me, it just ticks all the boxes. It's comfortable to shoot, fun to shoot, accurate to shoot, get really good consistency. And I can smack the crap out of stuff at 100 yards all day long. I wish I had an air gun to shoot these flies. Uh, I can smack <laughs> stuff at 100 yards all day long. So that's enough about the gun. Again, I want to say thank you to Utah Air Guns for sponsoring this segment and hooking us up with some great product. Uh, we're going to be using the Hawk Frontier 34. So we're talking about, I don't know what this gun's going for right now. It's probably 25 plus. The scope is 15 plus, plus or minus. So we got a lot sitting here. So it better shoot well, and boy, does it ever shoot well. <laughs> so let's get to it. Uh, we get our crony going. Also, the True Ballistic Crony, radar driven, uh, now that I've figured out how to make this thing really work, has been really nice. Again, this is something brought to you by Utah Air Guns. So FX stuff, the True Ballistic Crony, click on the Utah Air Guns link and go check them out. All right. We're going to start at 50 yards. That's kind of like 
warm up. Let's see, I'll go ahead and load the mag. I don't remember how many shots we get in the mag, but let's count them out. That's the turkey, correct? Yeah, the turkin. We're gonna shoot the turkin. I'm using JSB 35s. Um, if I were to hunt with this, I would just switch over to the, the, um, the Hades. The Hades out of this would just be devastating. And I would, I would shoot coyote with this all day, no problem. 81.02 uh, grain pellets we have here. The impact is just devastating. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll count my rounds here in a second. I believe in the way I have it set up, we can get two mags, like pretty much two mags before we drop off the reg, or very close to it, which is about ideal for my usage. Now, if you want more shots, you can tune it for more shots. If you want more power, you can tune it for more power. You can make it do what you want, which is one of the things that made the impact so like impactful in the industry. I know, bad joke, sorry. All right, let's get this dropped in here. Now the first time you get this lined up, you gotta wiggle a little bit, and then it's all set. Okay, safety is on. All right, so I'm going to set up 10 power. This is the first focal plane scope. Gosh, that's a beautiful piece of glass. This, this scope goes from five to 30. So when I am out to 100 and focused, it is clear, absolutely clear from the center all the way to the edge. And I was talking about this last night when we were going through all those Hawk optics. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna want something that can really reach out like far, and this scope is really great for firearms too. I mean, a lot of the Hawk scopes are more firearms than air guns really, but they, they're just clear. If you want something that can really reach out five, six, 800 yards, you want to, you want, you, you want, you need good glass. And the frontier line is like their top line. Uh, that's what you want to look at. The sidewinder is great too. Uh, the endurance is great too. You start getting down to the Air Max and the Vantage. They're okay, but I, I mean, if you're going to be shooting that far, you want really good glass. Go for the frontier, go for the endurance. <clears throat> the frontier is just awesome. All right, let me back this back up here. Too close. 10. Yep, 10, and we'll set our parallax to get it dialed in. All right, uh, let me turn my crony on. We want to get the numbers. As much as I kind of, I'll, I'll say complain, gripe, kind of tease the fact that it keeps shutting off on me in between my yakking, at least the battery lasts a really long time, so. That's nice. Integrated battery. You don't have to go hunt a nine volt. That's nice. Okay, we ready? Yes, sir, on how the we, turkey. How we doing, Sue? Good. Okay. Safety is off. Let's roll. Gosh, that's nice. Okay, it's 110 foot pounds. It's, I wish, I really wish I could articulate fully how beautiful it is to shoot this gun. Um, I, there's guns I get really excited about. The Hooban is one, love the Hooban. You guys know I love that. But like you get to the 35 and up, I don't have another gun that even comes close to the shooting experience of that caliber. I have other 35s, I have bigger, but it's so quiet. I don't know how they do it because it's just, you just hear the pellet sizzling through the air, it's awesome. Okay, and it's dead nuts too. Oh, I pulled a little bit. I say dead nuts and then I shank the shot. Isn't that the <laughs> way it is? Oh. We're gonna do five shots on that, and then we're gonna just jump straight over to 100, you know? We're gonna spend some time down 100 yard targets. Now guys, that's AR-500 steel. That's not thin air gun steel, that's for, for AR-15s. So, or, or bigger. I mean, that you can shoot, that's firearm plate. So, 
that's a heavy target and this thing's swinging it good and we're 112 foot pounds my first shot was a little light off of phil here we go hit it again there it is 113 foot pounds let's jump right to 100 i'm going to go ahead and set the um i'll put safety on i'm going to set the the crony to point down range are you shooting the ram um you know i'm going to go right for the little blue targets those start off with the disc about that big maybe a little smaller um i want I, I i've already been shooting this today we actually had a guest show up friend of ours he pulled trigger a couple times um Really never shot air guns like this before. I love having folks out like that, so that's pretty cool. If you guys are in the El Paso area, please look us up and come visit. Even if it's not for the expo, um, we have the range, and we're really thinking about starting an air gun club where we do something once a month or something where you guys can come out, air gunners in the area can come out and shoot. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments. If you're in the area and want to come out and experience some really cool air guns or you want to learn more about it, you definitely look me up because... Yeah, I love this stuff. I love showing people about it, too. Um, anyway, I was doing some shooting earlier, and I dialed in a bit. And this scope, if you go online and look at the reticle on Hawk's website for this, it's the Frontier 34, first focal plane. It's a 5 to 30. And you're going to look at the scope. It's got so many aim points on the, <laughs> down below the crosshair, like a ton. It's probably like a bench rest shooter's dream scope because it's just so so many aim points so i'm i'm looking at the numbers and uh the scale on this starts like it goes from 4 8 12 16. Uh, i am sitting the 12 and i'm going to zoom in a bit let's go to 20. i'm setting the 12 right just slightly above center on the on the circle down there. And let's see where we hit. I don't believe I cocked it, but we're gonna, I don't wanna double feed it. So we're just gonna gently squeeze the trigger, see if something happens here. No, oh, hold on. No, we're set, okay. And I forgot to count how many pellets we have, but we'll, we'll figure it out, I guess, when we're done here. Okay. The 12 is slightly over center. Wind's coming up. 791. I think that's pretty much dead center. And unbelievably quiet. <clears throat> Just like Sue. Yes. We've shot a lot of guns. Everything from 177 to 50. Now I know the shot in the shotgun. The, the shotgun and the 50 cal, they're loud. We've shot a bunch of suppressed gun. This is the 35 pushing 100 plus foot pounds. Quiet. What do you think? Quiet. Yeah, Robert's saying quiet. Sue? Would you shoot it again? Because I was paying attention to the audio trying to find that model on the Hawk website. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I'll shoot it again. You listen. <laughs> and here we go. One of the beautiful things about air guns, if you are, I, and I think this is true for like ladies, you don't really want the recoil. And you don't like the noise. No. So this gives you precision, power, accuracy, without the noise, without the recoil. Yes, that's my kind of gun. And, and it, light. Well, this is maybe not light, but where you shoot off a rest, you're all set. All right. Again, 12, just over center. 700. Oh, I pulled it. That's like... Um... <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> that's very quiet. Haji says, come Rick, crank that turret 12 mil and hit that sucker. There it is. Hi, Haji. I meant to say hi to Haji. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Um, check out some of the videos, man. We've done a ton. I hope, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, yeah. If you guys go to GTA, see Haji's link in, on the banners, be sure to click on it and go see, go see his website. All right, we're going to spend a little time on this target, and then we're going to move over to the hostage target. Because this is the gun I was thinking of would be perfect for that. 794. Got just a slight breeze. 
And I am shooting off like, I mean, I'm not stabilized like I should be maybe for accuracy, accuracy. So you got a lot of me behind the trigger here. Haji says he's living the dream just like you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Helps if you use the right aim point. That was eight, not 12. Just to the left. There it is. Let's push it a little bit left. We've got a little wind coming. I'm watching the, the flag start going like this. So it's pushing a little bit. Yeah, do you see what I mean? At 25, the flag's pushing left. Yep. At 50, it's pushing back. <laughs> do you see how they're yeah. all different? Well, the bank is going to, because we have banks, berms, right? So that's going to impact a bit. Oh, that's true. And we do have just variable winds, and they swirl uh, around here. So it's, when you go down range, like right here, it seems really calm. But if you walk down, it's not. It's just this shelter with the shade cloth uh, really makes a big difference. Uh, compared to what you feel downrange. Which is wonderful in the desert. So there I'm going to aim just a, just a skosh right, still using 12. Eight hundred one. Yeah, I mean, that's 16 shots. I think I got, I think it's, I think it's 17 round mag. We're going to find out. I forgot to count it, but we'll find out. And then we're going to look at the consistency because one of the things, if you're going to go for a gun like this, which is definitely, it's a high end air gun. Um, to, I mean, if, first of all, it's one of the most customizable, user customizable, easily customizable guns you can get. It is, it is expensive, but it delivers, right? So I have the Wildcat 22, which is squarely in the boringly accurate category. Um, I think my wife would really enjoy shooting that gun, frankly, because it's super light uh, and just super gentle and easy to shoot and quiet and all the things she loves. Um, but it doesn't have the same level of adjustment. It's got a power knob at the back and it's you dial it in a little bit. But the infinite number of possibilities you have here is, is incredible. And you can convert this. If you want to take this from 35 and go to 30 or 25 or even 22, I know of people that have taken this and put 22 and just cranked a 22 running slugs. And now you're pushing like, you're really pushing. Like you can shoot far because uh, you're getting that velocity way up. Uh, but for me, setup is 35 like this. It's perfect. If I can get two mags out of it, which is I think where we're going to sit, it's just ideal for me. Maybe you want something different. Maybe you want something more. But this may, this puts a big smile on my face. And I love having other people come and shoot this gun because it's so easy to shoot. Uh, we had some cadets come out. Well, I say cadets. They were my daughter's friends from Civil Air Patrol. It was not a cadet function. Don't panic, CAP. Uh, they were just here for their, her birthday party. And they got to shoot this gun in the wind, and they were tagging things at 100 yards. Um, that high success rate, high ease of shooting, makes people want to go shoot more, and this gun certainly delivers that. Um, let me take a few more shots. I think this might be the last one. Then we're going to switch to the hostage target. It's calmed down now. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got one more. Okay. Click. There it is. One more, one more. Just like that. Let's take a look at our string. So we have an extreme spread of 19. Now, that's impressive in a small bore. Well, I, like we all want sub, sub, like one single digit, right? But I get it. But uh, this is 35. This is a big bore, regulated, granted, expensive, 
multiple regs. I mean, there's a lot going on here to make that happen, but still, 19 feet per second uh, for an extreme spread is pretty doggone good. Uh, and everything is over 110 foot-pounds, 110, 112, 114. We topped out at, whoops, back up. Uh, yeah, 114.4, 114.5, 114.8. So almost 115 foot-pounds, like I said, as far for my usage, for what I would use this for, which is primarily target shooting like this, just for fun. It gets expensive with these pellets, but nevertheless, thank you, Joe, by the way. Um, but I would throw Hades in it. That's what I would run. I'd run Hades and call it a day um, if I was hunting with this. And I would have no problem hunting Coyote at 100 yards with this. It's so quiet and the pellets are moving fast enough, I don't think, I don't think they'd have enough time to really jump the shot significantly. So I think we'd be good to hunt with this at 100 yards. 50 yards for sure, oh my gosh. They wouldn't even know what happened, It'd be lights out. And just to make sure I didn't actually accidentally double shoot or something, I'm gonna count these pellets again, just to make sure. I think it's 18 shots. So if we can get 36 shots, 36 regulated shots out of a 35 cal, pushing over 100 foot pounds, I'll take it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 shots. There you go. Um, can I talk to you about the shooting experience, right? Probably. Going to the hostage, correct? I'm going to go to the hostage target, yeah. Okay. okay, so for me, and I talked about this, I think in the last video I was talking about can, being connected to the product. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you could put this in a vise. You could probably get way better results than I'm getting today. But I like to be connected to the gun. I like this. Probably while never be go shoot competitively. Probably, one, I'm not, I don't think I'm near good enough. So, I, you know, why? I, I don't want to go do it. <laughs> I mean, I'd shoot awful. Um, but I'm also, I, I don't like the pressure. I just, this is casual. This is therapeutic. This is all of the things. I got into air gunning because I wanted something relaxing and fun to do without a ton of pressure and stuff. The experience matters to me. So I don't want to have to fight with the trigger. I don't want to have to fight with how I have to hold it or have my neck at a funny angle for the scope to look right. I just want to be able to pull it up find my target, gently squeeze the trigger and watch it go pow. Um, and that's guns that give that to me. I love, this is certainly one of them. Okay, now the wind comes up. Let's make it a challenge, huh? So we have down there uh, our hostage target. And <clears throat> so you've got the yellow plate, which is about this big. And then we have the bad guy head that's about that big, about the end of a Coke can. So what we're gonna try and do is smack that without hitting the hostage. Let's see how we do. 100 yards out with a little breeze. You ready, Sue? Yes, sir. Right, I'm gonna aim just right about here and hope I'm good to go. I went right over there, I scared him. Haji said Hades would be absolutely devastating in that 35. Yeah. Anything I under 100 yards. Yep, I, I think the Hades, is, I, and I know people want to shoot slugs. They got this big slug, slug, slugs. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> I mean, look, if you're trying to shoot past 100 yards, that's where slugs really come into play. But, and I just realized my crony shut off. It's okay. We're going to miss a shot. No. But just inside 100 yards and, and in, pellets are great. And I have found, personally, they're more accurate um, than both slugs. And trying to find the right slug can be a challenge. Um, and I remember I just said, I, in the frustration and tension, and I, I'm, uh -uh. I just want to come down and out here and have fun and shoot and enjoy myself. And this gets it done for me. How okay. you said he's always been impressed with the Hades and its ability to dump energy on target for ethical hunting. It's awesome. I agree. Here we go. I'm going to aim dead center with the 12 on the hostage head. Seven hundred eighty-seven. 
I should check my, oops, got out of sync there. Where are we? You know what? We need to put air in the gun. I was not at two, full 250 when I started. Let me take this shot and we're gonna put air in it. Does that have one on both sides? It has three gauges. Cool. Okay, I'm shooting over. All right. Let's put some air in it. So yes, we have our pressure gauge, first <laughs> regulator, second regulator. <laughs> Gee what? says that's why you missed the bad guy, Rick. The crony yeah, was off. The crony was off. Yep. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I scared uh, him. He he dropped his gun and ran away. <laughs> for sure. I think you need to shoot your blue rocks that you painted. <laughs> yeah, my target rocks. Yeah. He had he has rocks on the bank. Show him. You can show him while I'm filling up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I keep telling her I'm going to shoot my target rocks rock on the banks there. I don't know if you can see that up there, that little blue oh, dot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's painted it. <laughs> and then there's one over here that he's got as well, a little oh, blue okay. one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show them on camera so they can and see my target he's painted rocks. it blue. Well, that way you so can that see we it, can honey. You can actually see it, yeah. Wouldn't it make your job not so hard? Oh, aren't you sweet? There's another one. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so it looks like we get a mag and a bit, but not a full two mags. That's a bummer. I could tune it to, to get two full mags, come off the power a little bit, probably still be over 100 foot pounds and get my two mags, but we're going to go with it like this. And to tune it, we sort of need to take an afternoon. I mean, I love the gun, but the tuning side of it, it's process. <laughs> So, and you shoot a lot of pellets in the process. Okay, we're good to go now. Let's take, and I don't think I jacked around in. We're just gonna, we're gonna see here. No, we're set, okay. I gotta not rest it on that magazine. Okay, here we go. Boy, I wish you guys could see through the scope. Maybe next time we'll do an ATN on this or something. I really wanted to use this frontier though. All right, you ready, hon? Yes, sir. There it is. 788. Oh, we did it again. Let me get this bag out of here. Every time I do that, it just gets this just out of alignment a bit. There it is. Here we go. Nice. You're gonna stop <sighs> while you're ahead? It's just so satisfying. I, I shot those targets down at SHOT Show and I said, gosh, I always wanted one. And then I was on Amazon and they had them. I'm like, I'll buy one of those. Um, I love steel targets on my range. Uh, I enjoy them quite a bit for events like this. They're great. You just hit them with some paint, you're back up and running. Everything stays uh, in the same position. I have nice berms behind all of them, so if there's an errant shot, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, I have, I need, if anybody has uh, heavy equipment that would like to come out and donate some time, uh, we need to, I'd like to get another uh, eight or ten feet. Uh, we have plenty of dirt out here in the desert, so you don't need material, but we just need an equipment operator with the heavy equipment. We'd love to have you out and do a little work, a little, little, free, little free labor to help Rick out. It'd be awesome. Uh, anyway, we'll feed you. Just, you know, we can shoot some air guns on off time. Uh, but no, the berms are really nice because it keeps everything at contained. And we have them like 50, 75, and 100. I need to put one at 25. Uh, I have like something, but it's more like 30. So I want to get that set up. But the steel targets are great um, for this kind of work. And I would like to get some more interesting, reactive, moving targets so I might let my wife go through Amazon because she loves shooting steel targets and things that move around. So she might yeah. like to pick out a couple for herself. Any Maybe kind of reactionary targets is good. Yeah. All right, I'm going to hit that. Again, uh, you're back on target I'm again. I'm back on target now. I just switched your camera. Oh, well. <laughs> go ahead. You're ready. Oh, just to the left. 
Hai și stată. Tu un gest în lat. I told Joe we miss him. And he said, come pull orders. <laughs> I said, been there, done that. Yeah. I'm having way more fun here. Yep. <clears throat> Man, that's harder than it looks, guys. I'm telling you. It is tough. There you go. Gosh, that's satisfying. Guys, it I think... You, it's it's kind of like um, gambling. It makes you want to go one more time. Yeah, just, just one, one more. more just one more. Yeah, you stop while you're And then you hit it and you're like, okay, I'm now done. I need to go I'm one done. more time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you guys get the point. Exquisite air gun. Now, FX makes a lot of different stuff. This is the Impact Mark III. If you guys want to check out all the FX stuff, it's Utah Air Guns, guys. And the links, well, it's in the video description. First of all, you can go right down there. There's a link to their showcase. And from the showcase, you can go to their website and talk to them. You can communicate with them from the showcase, all that stuff as well. So check them out. They provide the crony. Before the expo, actually, they sent that out and... Now that I've figured out how to make this thing be consistent, it was my error, the problems I was having with it, just had to learn how to use it. Man, it is like phew, night and day. The awesomeness of having that available is just really, really cool. Wind shear. Oh, oh. That was a little dust devil, maybe? A little baby mm -hmm. one? Uh, I don't know, a little dust devil, maybe? Little dust Just devil. a little dust. Just a little bit. Just, you know, hey, you know, that's what happens when you live <laughs> out here in the desert. You get visitors like dust devils. <laughs> anyway, back to that. I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, Airgun yep. Web, Gateway to Air Guns. Haji, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we've got some more stuff, man. Hopefully you can hang out with us a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, don't get in trouble at work, right? Um, but thanks again to, again, all of our sponsors, like I said. And also... All of the folks that help financially support this expo, check them out at our website, theairgunexpo.com. I'm going to wrap it up. Gosh, I might do some more shooting with this later. This is another one of those guns that stays on the shelf, like on the on the wall, uh, ready to go um, because, yeah, it's fun to shoot. Don't want to have to go find it. Where is that? Where is it? What case is it in and what connex? No, this one stays where we can put, my, put our hands on it. All right, guys, that's it for now. My name is Rick here with Airgun Web and the Airgun Expo. Thanks for watching.